During the Second World War, different countries utilised espionage and spies on a huge scale to get the upper hand over their enemies. Spies were incredibly trained, and many were men and women who would take their secrets to the graves with them if they were caught. Today we look at the remarkable story of a German spy who was captured inside England and was found guilty of being a spy for the Nazis. It's no doubt that Joseph Jacobs intended to cause disruption to the British war effort, and for this he met the ultimate price, however today he holds a remarkable record. Inside the Tower of London, the most notorious prison in the world, Queens of England lost their lives, being beheaded on Tower Green in brutal fashion during the Tudor period. However, it is Joseph Jacobs who has gone down in history as the last person executed at the Tower of London. So join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Joseph Jacobs, the Nazi spy executed at the Tower of London. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Joseph Jacobs was a German citizen who was in fact born in Luxembourg in 1898. Little is known about his upbringing. He signed up to serve the German infantry before becoming a lieutenant in the Four Foot Guards. He was well regarded in the military and was eventually drafted into the Wehrmacht during the Second World War as Hitler sought to conquer large swathes of Europe and he served as an Oberleutnant. However, there was an issue as Joseph Jacobs during the pre-Second World War period had actually been imprisoned and locked up in Switzerland, charged with selling counterfeit gold, and because of this shame he was forced to step down from his position and became demoted to a Feldwebel, a non-commissioned officer within the Wehrmacht. He was then transferred to the Meteorological Service Department of the German Army, and shortly after he began to become involved in the Abwehr. The Abwehr was a German military intelligence service for the Wehrmacht, and they operated during the Second World War to conduct sabotage operations and were involved in counterintelligence and espionage. Joseph Jacobs worked for the Abwehr in intelligence and was trained in the ways of being a spy. In September 1940, he attended training in Hamburg to conduct work in this field, and he returned to Berlin at the weekends. It was noted during one of these trips that Joseph Jacobs was planning to embark on a mission to England, and in fact during the mission, he planned to escape eventually to America to live with his aunt. However, his friend betrayed him, and once this information came to light, he was transferred back to Hamburg. However, Jacobs was still valued, and the Abwehr deemed him to be good spy material, and he received further training in early January 1941, and he was sent for training in transmitting and receiving wireless messages in The Hague. However, on the 31st of January, Joseph Jacobs' big mission to work as a spy within England and Britain was ready to go. He was given as much training as the Abwehr could give him, and he was flown in a German bomber, most probably a Heinkel 111, from Schiphol Airport near to Amsterdam, for England. He was hiding in the belly of the German bomber, and at around 8.30pm, over Ramsey in Huntingdonshire, he jumped out of the aircraft with his parachute. He exited the aircraft and parachuted down, and his landing did not go very well, and when he hit the ground, his ankle snapped. Joseph Jacobs was left lying in agony in an English potato field, belonging to a local farm called Dove House Farm. He lay there all evening with his broken ankle, in horrific pain, and remained there until the morning, smoking all of his cigarettes, trying to work out his next move. Around 12 hours after he exited the German aircraft, Joseph Jacobs fired some shots from a Mauser pistol into the air to attract attention. He was then found by two farm labourers who were on their way to the fields to work, and one of them located Jacobs before the other alerted the local dad's army, the Ramsey Home Guard. The Home Guard then informed the police reporting the capture of an enemy spy. Shortly after the police arrived at the farm and Joseph was searched, a number of different items were found on his possession. A wireless transmitter was even found close by, which he had tried to conceal in the soil, and shortly after investigations took place, the spy was thrown onto a horse-drawn cart and taken to the local police station. Joseph was then taken from a police station to a hospital, receiving treatment for his broken ankle, before he was imprisoned and taken to Latchmere House where MI5 interrogated him. Over the course of the next three months, he gave different statements to officers, but the national newspapers had published all about Joseph Jacobs parachuting into England and his capture. At the time, MI5 often turned spies into double agents if they were deemed suitable. However, because of the nature and publicity of Joseph Jacobs' case, it was deemed not acceptable. 
Now the Treachery Act, a law that outlined the punishments for enemy spies, deemed that neutral aliens and British citizens were to be tried by a civilian court by judge and jury, and that their punishment could be death by hanging, unless they were soldiers which meant execution by firing squad. Enemy aliens were legally also allowed to be tried by military court martial, and as Joseph Jacobs was a German citizen, it was considered he should face a trial by court martial. An application for this was accepted, despite him being helpful in helping to turn other German spies. The court martial was arranged and took place on the 4th and 5th of August 1941 at the Duke of York's headquarters in Chelsea. It was clear he was an enemy alien and also was a member of the enemy's armed forces and the court martial went ahead. Most World War II spies were tried in civil courts and hanged in England, but Jacobs' case was an exception. The prosecution and defence presented their case and it took 10 minutes of deliberation on the 5th of August to deem Joseph Jacobs as an enemy spy and he was sentenced to death and sent to Wandsworth Prison to await his fate. Joseph tried to appeal to King George VI during his imprisonment, but this was denied and his sentence was confirmed. Now what made Joseph Jacobs' execution in particular historic is the fact that it took place at the Tower of London. The Tower of London, the infamous prison and site of execution and torture that overlooks the banks of the River Thames, was the site for Joseph's execution. The Tower of London itself was the place where Henry VIII's wives Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard were brutally executed by beheading on Tower Green for crossing the King. It was the site where Lady Jane Grey also lost her head, the nine-day Queen of England. Its reputation for torture occurred during the Tudor and medieval time, as many were subject to the rack, which would rip their limbs out of their sockets and were brutally interrogated inside the walls of the Tower. Also, the Tower of London was where Guy Fawkes, the infamous gunpowder plotter, was tortured to within an inch of his life before he confessed to planning to blow up the Houses of Parliament. So Joseph Jacobs remains today the last person to be executed within the walls of the Tower of London. In the early morning of Friday the 15th of August 1941, Joseph Jacobs was driven from Wandsworth Prison under a military escort and taken into the walls of the Tower of London. He arrived within the tower's walls and was offered some medication by a doctor to calm his nerves, of which Jacobs decided to take the medication. Whilst inside the tower, he was led to a miniature firing range which was found within the inner and outer walls of the tower. It was here where spies were executed during the First World War. As Jacobs arrived at the firing range, he came face to face with his firing squad that had been assembled from members of the Scots Guards, and they were all armed with Lee Enfield rifles. Joseph Jacobs was taken into the rifle range and was sat down on a brown Windsor chair. He was tied to the chair and blindfolded, and as he was sat in the chair, a soldier pinned a circular target over his chest, over his heart, for the firing squad to hit as a black hood was placed over his head. The final moments of Joseph Jacobs' life were played out inside the rifle range as Lieutenant Colonel C.R. Gerard gave the signal for the firing squad to take aim. His alleged last words were spoken as he said to the firing squad, shoot straight Tommies. The eight-man firing squad with their guns pointing at the German spy were ready. Three of the guns had been given blank bullets and five live rounds were in the other rifles. At 7.12am on the 15th of August 1941, the squad shot together their rifles and instantly Jacobs was killed. A post-mortem confirmed that Jacobs died from the wounds sustained with one of the bullets going through his heart and the other four being around the marked area on the target. His body was then interned in an unmarked grave in a Catholic cemetery. However, Joseph Jacobs today remains the man who was the last person to be executed inside the walls of the Tower of London. He's gone down in the history books for this and joins many queens of England and members of the Tudor and Stuart aristocracy who brutally met their ends inside the Tower of London. It's strange that as history and centuries have changed, the fact that the tower's use for punishment did not change. As different conflicts plagued the globe, the tower's purpose remained the same. Joseph Jacobs died within the same walls as Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard and many other incredibly famous historical figures. Who knows what the future holds as to whether Jacobs may hold his historical legacy forever or if in future conflicts the Tower of London will once again be used as a site of execution. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe and once again, thank you so much for watching.